and welcome to Friday night. I hope you're having a really good day. And it's evening time, and I'm going to share with you something really special today. I'm going to share with you a little story. I'm going to share with you my love for books. You know what the saying is, don't ever judge a book by its cover. You know, that's really true. The books that I love, my favorite books, are very bland. In fact, they have no excitement whatsoever. For illustrations, plain books. But I'm going to share with you a story, a little bit about my love for books and how that all started. At age 22, I had a five-year-old, and my children attended a small Mennonite school, and I was the youngest mother there. I didn't like school very much. In fact, I didn't like school at all. But when my child, my oldest, was five years old, I would take her to school and I would pick her up. And the waiting area was a library. As I would wait, I would look at all the books on the shelves and I would start to admire them. For when I was a little girl, school wasn't very important to me. But as a young mom, I wanted to learn. At the time, the librarian was in her 70s. One day, she saw me looking at the books. And she said, Teresa, would you like to take a book home? I never thought about taking a book home, but I thought, what a great idea. So as the children would take out their books at the library, so would I. I took out books that talked about history and learning things. Those years that my children went to school, I also went to school in the library. I ended up doing a lot of work for the librarian in organizing the books, and it started me with a love and passion for reading. Now, all of the books that I read are nonfiction. I really don't have time for books that really aren't true, not really too much into the novel romance books. Everything that I read is about things that happened in life or things that teach. A lot of people say I should have been a teacher. You know, in some ways, I was a teacher. Being a young mom with three small children, I raised and taught them and I learned with them. So I did teach, but my classroom was really small. Then by the time they reached sixth grade, I homeschooled my children. They wanted to be homeschooled and it was a fun opportunity to spend even more time with my children. I was a farm wife for many years and those years spending with my children are years that I will always treasure. My favorite books I'm going to share with you today are just very ordinary books, but they live extraordinary in me because they're homesteading books, homemaking books from the 50s and the 60s. This cookbook I love called The Attic Cookbook. All of these cookbooks are very old. But my favorite books of all are the home ec books. It's sad. Where has it all gone? The home ec classes of the 50s. In my home ec books, it teaches you everything from how to save money to how to have that perfect meal, to how to wash your clothing, how to take care of children. These homemaking books are very cheap. You can buy them used on Amazon or thrift books. But it talks about nutrition. It talks about the old ways of living. The Economy Cookbook from 1948 was one of the very first books that I got that was very old. 1948, The Economy Cookbook. It just talks about everyday foods. And a lot of you remember the Better Homes and Gardens Cookbook. Almost every mother or every grandmother had a book like this. And these are from the 50s and 60s. I love the old ones. This brings back a lot of memories. I hope you're enjoying my videos of my memories and I'm hoping that you enjoy all of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you. I can't wait till tomorrow evening to share with you a little more and Sunday I'm going to be sharing even a lot more about a direction that my channel is going. You know, there's something about a book paging through the pages smelling a book 
It just brings the senses. So many times we are living in this electronic world where everything is with a touch of a button. We can find any book or anything we wish just by swiping on the iPad. But there's so much we're missing in the written word and the written book. We are missing all of these beautiful treasures paging through a book that's decades old. It's something that our children are not learning. They don't understand the written word and the power of the written word in book form. So I hope I inspired you a little bit in learning about the history of the world that we live in and learning about how our mothers and our grandmothers, our aunts, how they had their households, how they lived their life. What did they learn? What did they do? History can come alive. All we have to do is open a book and read. This book a subscriber gave me called Housekeeping in Old Virginia. And what a treasure it is. Housekeeping in Old Virginia. The foods are quite odd, some of them, but when you didn't have grocery stores or the internet, you didn't have the, quite the selection of food that you did then. This was one of my earliest books, The Growing Year. And this was written by a woman who had a cottage. And every single month she wrote a chapter. And she shared her life in written form. Many people ask me if I do what my grandma Fanny did, if I write in a diary. No, I haven't done that, but I am putting all of my videos, I'm putting them all on CDs for my grandchildren someday. Because we can always have the new, but we always hold on to the old. And somewhere along the line, in the middle, is perfection. A little bit of old, a little bit of new, and together it makes it complete. So I don't know what you're doing this evening, other than watching my video. After my video, why don't you turn off your internet and open a book and sit and read. You might be surprised what you learn. Take care, everyone. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hmm. Apple vinegar. I want to make that. I didn't know you plant pumpkins that way. That's really interesting. You mean Grandma had to set the iron on the coal stove to get it hot? Oh my goodness. Such work that our older ancestors had to do. Hmm, raising small animals, rabbits, that's something I could learn. How to skin a muskrat? Oh, I don't think I'll be learning that. Not anytime soon. Boil linens and lemon to make your linens white and crisp? Hmm. I think that sounds like a video.